Egotastic fun time nights, nights, nights. Hey gang, I'm JP and welcome back to Talking the Orville on Egotastic Fun Time Nights. It's a little bit of a sexier version of the show. <laughs> what? I just finished watching the latest episode of the Orville, Deflectors, episode seven, season dose. Uh, we just finished the pre-show about an hour and a half ago. And I was able to watch tonight's episode right away, and now I'm going to talk to you about it right away in my car because you guys seem to like that, and I feel most comfortable giving my thoughts in my car for some reason. <laughs> it also smells in here a little bit. I, okay, I just saw Deflectors. I love the episode. It was a interesting episode for sure. It was... Uh, you know, at during the pre-show, we were talking about we didn't know if it was time travel. We didn't know if it was a, an issue with uh, the environmental simulator. And, you know, it had to do with the simulator, uh, but not in the way that we thought. It was a murder mystery. Somebody messed with the simulator's data banks or whatever to uh, fake a murder. And that was cool. Um, now, I'm not going to recap the whole episode. I just want to talk about uh, my first impressions here. Uh, of course, we'll do the full recap during the fully loaded Talk in the Orville review coming up in just a couple days. <laughs> Let's get, I'll start working on it right away. Um, at the top of my brain, I just have to say to you guys, come on, Clyden. Clyden. Clyden, really? Dude, okay. So I'm frustrated. I'm not mad at Clyden. Um, I don't hate Clyden. I'm just disappointed in Clyden. And, of course, we know that's even worse, right? I'd rather be hated than somebody be disappointed in me. Boy, I've disappointed a lot of ladies. Anyway, we we love them. We love Bordis. I'm not going to say we love the Mocklins, but we love Bordis. We love Clyden. I love Clyden. I always have. Chad L. Coleman. Um... He's great because, you know, the Mocklins are very, you know, st you know, strict and reserved and, you know, m kind of mean a little bit. And Clyden has always been a little, you know, sweet, a little funny, uh, always has the smile, the sparkle in his eyes. And dude, he was a dick, just a bigoted dick. And this is not his first offense that time that he stabbed. Bordis, but of course that's part of their culture. Them being a dick and all bigoted is part of their culture. Um, them uh, giving their daughter a weenie was part of their culture last season. And it's always been because of Clyden, really. And I'm just really... And and the, the episode really brought this up, especially between that conversation between Ed and Kelly about, like, you know, how much are we going to be taking from these Mocklins when it comes... To to our relationship with the Mocklins, how long is it going to last? Because really, our fundamental differences go right down to the core of our values. And that's kind of an exercise. That's kind of the point with the Mocklins as far as uh, their place in this show. It's like, okay, we love Bordas, we love Clyden, we respect the whole fact that they're a different race of people from a different world with a different culture. But damn, does their culture suck. Just in every way, shape, and form, their culture sucks. And Tala, and this was a Tala-heavy episode, we really got to know Tala a lot better. Um, and I really like her. I really dig Tala. Jessica Zor, thumbs up to you. Um, you know, we were all worried, and, and I'm just really happy with her. She's tough. She's no nonsense, but she's also just a real person. She's got a big heart, as we saw. And... Um, so it turns out low car Bordis's ex-boyfriend comes aboard. He's the engineer. And, uh, it turns out that he's Mocklin gay. He likes girls. Gross. That is, that goes against, uh, my core values. Uh, it's Adam and Steve, not Adam and Eve. Uh, come on. Gross. So it turns out he's Mocklin gay. And imagine that. Imagine he's, uh, he likes women. There's no women at all on his planet. At all. At all. And the very few that existed are 
you know, change right away. Or, you know, there's that one that's hidden. We don't know if there's any more. And, uh, and that brings me back to Clyden. Clyden was super bigoted and said, I know what you are. You know, you like girls. I'm going to expose you. And basically in Mocklin culture, if you're exposed as being, uh, well, it's not straight really. And it's not gay really. We're just going to call them stray. If you're stray, then uh, you get put to death. And that whole little journey, the guy coming out to uh, Talis says, hey, I like you. And she's like, oh, let's let's try it out a little bit. You are like uh, 12 feet tall. And that's always been interesting. Uh, that's been something I've into. And I hardly ever meet 12 feet tall people, foot tall people. So this could really work out well for me. And uh, he comes out to her. It's, it's a big deal. I knew right away, dude. It's that first scene with her. And him in engineering, and uh, they're going over stuff. And she's like, hey, I'm here if you need anything. And she walks off, and he does this little look. And I'm like, oh, that's, he's into her, even though he's not supposed to be. I call, I knew it right away. Or else why would they even do that, right? So that whole storyline was very interesting. I'm very, I'm glad Clyden didn't kill him. Um, But Clyden kind of did kill him because Clyden said he was going to expose him. Uh, that was a death sentence because as soon as he goes back to Mockless, he's going to be tried and put to death, which is exactly what happened. Again, kudos to this show, and they do it with all the Mocklin stuff. It's never a happy ending. When it comes to the Mocklin thing, you're like, okay, this time, uh, this time they're going to do the right thing. They're going to see, uh, you know, you know, they're going to, they're going to, their brains are going to reason uh, the situation out, and they're going to see what they should be doing, uh, the right thing to do. Nope. Uh-uh, now with the Mocklins, that dude's dead. Low car is dead. All right? They had a low car diet, and he died, okay? So that was really sad. And there was that scene between him and uh, Tala when she finds him. And he's like, no, I'm not going to hide. I'm just going to go back and accept my sentence. And he had those tears. Man, Kevin Daniels, that actress, Kevin Daniels. Kevin Daniels is apparently... Um, like has his own climate because he's so damn tall. Dude, Kevin Daniels, I had no idea you were that tall. That was insane. I thought they might have, you know, had you wearing heels or something like that. Dude was gigantic. Uh, good for you, dude. Good for you. Uh, you got those jeans. Awesome. Uh, great performances, not only from Jessica Zor, but from Kevin Daniels. So kudos to both of you guys. Uh, I had the feels, and this wasn't a happy feels like last time, happy refrain. This was a sad feels. This was an injustice type feels. And then also just getting angry. Uh, I was so angry at uh, Clyden, always angry at the Mocklins. Uh, a little bit angry at Bordis, but Bordis... But Bordis actually shown that he cares because he loved him. And back in their previous relationship, he found her, found him with a woman, um... And he didn't tell anybody because he didn't want him to be terminated. Uh, so Bordis is a little, you know, but, you know, Bordis keeps, he, Bordis is so much, you know, reserved, more reserved. Uh, but still, he always comes out on the right side of things for the most part. Okay, enough of that. Oh, some, oh, but yeah, that was an emotional episode. I really loved it. Of course, you know, this, the social uh, commentary is obvious what it was about. Good job on that show. Uh, some awesome things. Mocklin ships are badass, you guys. We've seen Mocklin ships before. I think this is the very first time we saw a Mocklin shuttle. What I always liked about Mocklin ships is they kind of look like some sort of weapon, like a, like a, I can't, you know, not a phaser, of course, but some sort of ha space hand pistol. Um, very formidable. You know, awesome that that great chase scene where they're having that mock battle uh, was very pretty. Um, we also got this great visual of Mockless, the the planet. Um, you can see how industrialized it is. We've seen it before in About a Girl, but this is the first time we got like a really good look of uh, uh, from orbit. And uh, yeah, just just really beautiful this season all the, the the shots of the ships and the planets and the space stuff really top notch really you know a huge upgrade this season all right the one thing i do have to talk about is the special guest star 
which we were told there was a big uh, guest spot in this episode, and we have to keep an eye out for it. It's the flower, okay, the giant flower. I can't remember what they're called. I will. Did, did you recognize the voice? I recognize the voice. I'm 99.9% .9 sure. There's always that 0.1% chance I'm wrong. Um, I just can't think of a time I've ever been wrong. Hmm. <laughs> but I could be wrong. But I'm 99.9% .9 sure, and I'm going to say it right now. yippee ki -yay, mother flower. That flower is played by Bruce Willis. And I had to close my eyes. Like, I watched it. I'm like, dang, that guy, that sounds familiar. But who is it? And then I closed my eyes and watched it again and then listen, you know, listened to it again with my eyes closed. I listened to it about eight times. And finally, there was some uh, phrase that he said. I can't remember. It's like, come on, Kelly, something. And I'm like, that's Bruce Willis. So we'll find out if that's Bruce Willis, I'm sure, in a day or two. But I'm calling it. That's Bruce Willis. Um, that was a, a great fun cameo. I was keeping my eyes out for Neil deGrasse Tyson. I'd love to see him pop up. There's a huge chance that he will pop up at some point, but you never know. He might never pop up. Man, stupid Neil deGrasse Tyson. Why don't you ever pop up? I love it when you come a big pop. Uh, so you guys, I love the episode. Uh, it's definitely not my favorite episode this season. Uh, there's just been too many great episodes, uh, but it's definitely, it's an episode of the Orville, so I'm going to love it just because I'm there with my peeps. Um, oh, I got to bring up Cassius. Cassius and Kelly was the other thing going on. And, uh, geez, come on, Kelly. Okay, so first off, I'm going to say it. You know, I've been wondering if Cassius is like a, a hidden krill, like a bad guy, a red herring. Um, no, I think he's just a dude, just a nice dude. He's a teacher. Um, uh, just a really great guy. And Kelly's like, oh, you probably want to get married someday and, you know, have this be a real relationship. We're going to have to break up. Why did you start dating him in the first place? He's a teacher. You know, he's very well. He's grounded. He's very sweet. He's obviously, you know, not there to, uh, you know, do a little smash and grab, though. <laughs> you know, hey, I ain't going to ain't going to uh, uh, fault you for that, Cassius. Uh, you know, he was hoping to build on a relationship with her, you know, see where it goes. Hopefully one day it'll be marriage, whatever. Uh, why are you even dating him? Why aren't you just, you know, getting jiggy with somebody on the uh, environmental simulator? Because, you know, everybody's, you know, underneath you. <laughs> no pun not, not intended. Um, just give some fake person in the environmental simulator because, you know, I know you're in command. I know it'd be weird. Um, so why did you do that, Kelly? You're, that's rude. That's mean. Why did you break that man's heart? Cassius is a nice guy. If you wanted to break his heart and he's a krill, I understand. He's a, he's a, he's a dirtbag krill. Oh, listen to me now. Now I'm bigoted against krill. Ugh, st stupid albino. Uh, Al oh, that's racist. Sorry. Uh, so that was very rude. So it looks like we're losing Cassius now, which is very sad because we really didn't get to know him. And I think there was something uh, about him that, you know, he could have been an interesting character, you know, get in a jam and he has to, I don't know, use his elementary school skills to get us out of the jam. <laughs> I don't know. But you guys, I love the episode. It was, uh, again, another different, another tonal shift. Uh, another episode of the Mocklins just being at some point this there's going to be have to be a throwdown against the Mocklins. Clyden and Boris are going to have to choose between the Union and Mocklis because uh, Mocklis and the Mocklins are just jerks, and I'm sick of them to tell you the truth. Every time it's like you guys are just horrible people. I'm really I'm sick of it, man. Um, but I'm never sick of the Orville because I loves it. <laughs> But uh, I'm going to get to work on the uh, full review soon, you guys. I'm going to put it together. We're going to have fun. Uh, I, again, want to say great job, Kevin Daniels. Great job, uh, Chad Coleman. Uh, great job, Jessica Zor. You guys really shined in this episode. And uh, also, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to watch the new Star Trek Discovery. Because apparently, you know that video I put out a couple weeks ago? about uh, the Red Angels being Spock or whatever, and Spock's mind-melding with himself. Uh, apparently, I was right. People are, tell are sending me messages right now saying I'm tonight, or not tonight, saying that I'm right. 
And so I'm going to go watch it and see what I'm right about. But okay, that's it. That's all I wanted to talk about today, tonight. And, the, and I talked about it. How about you? How did you like deflectors, shields, where people are putting their shields up, protecting themselves? Ah, oh, you know, I made the connection there, you guys. Um, was it, uh, did you love the episode? Did you hate the episode? Because this is going to be one of those episodes where there's, you know, a lot of people on both sides. Did you think it was just okay? Is it your favorite episode? Did it make you cry? Um, cause this is an episode that was definitely capable of making people cry, um, in a sad way. Uh, you can let me know what you think by joining the conversation below. And thank you so much for liking, sharing, supporting my stupid show, uh, clicking on all the stuff down there. It really does mean the world to me and it's really helping, uh, helping us take over the internet to make sure that everybody is getting all the egotasticness that they deserve, even though they don't even know they deserve it. They don't even want to deserve it, but they deserve it. Uh, I'll see you very soon. And as always, I hope all your times are egotastic fun times. Love you. Bye-bye. Egotastic fun time. We're going to have a great time. Egotastic fun time. Give me all your money. Give him all your money. You will find me funny. Just give me money. I love money. Give me all your 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 money.